will start this. This is the talk of 2019, evolution in screening for Down syndrome. Down syndrome is always RCOG favorite. And they want you to understand all the screening method and the diagnostic method, how you will differentiate Down syndrome from Edward and Patau syndrome, because these three are the commonest one. So this is a favorite question and how you will screen in cases of twin pregnancy, dichorionic twin, monochorionic twin, so all these things we will cover as well as the cell-free fetal DNA. Cell-free fetal DNA is the actual evolution because the other things are there since long. This one came in 2017 talk also, cell-free fetal DNA. And now in 19, they have given another talk where they have given more information. So this is really, really important. And this is always the favorite because this is something you have to know in any antenatal women you have to offer them screening. And once you offer the screening, you should know how to handle from there. So this is your job, being a specialist. This is not consultant job. So you should be thorough with your job. That's why whenever there is um, there is difficult scenarios like infertility, like laparoscopy and all, you consult the senior in urogynecology, oncology, you consult the senior, refer to them. But this is something you should know because you will be seeing the antenatal women. You will be offering them screening, counseling them, so, and this is a favorite part three station also that how to screen a woman with positive test or high risk test or whatsoever. So it's really, really important. Now, what is cell-free fetal DNA? Cell-free fetal DNA means you are analyzing the cell-free fetal DNA in the maternal blood. So from where these DNA, cell-free fetal DNA means there is no cell. Usually there is nucleus and then there is cell right the plasma membrane and the plasma is there cell free fetal dna means no cell is there only dna only dna means only genetic material only the material from nucleus has come out directly running in the maternal blood so that is cell free dna out of that cell free dna in the maternal blood some are from the fetus so that's why the name cell free fetal dna analysis so this will give you an idea about aneuploidy. We will see in the next few slides how. Why it has come? Definitely if a new technique has come, there must be some benefit, that's why it has come. So this method has improved detection rate. Means if you see the combined test, it will detect 90%, up to 90%. So this will detect up to 99%. Very nice. So it has improved the detection rate and it has reduced the false positive rate. False positive rate, 5% for combined tests, and this is 0.1%, so really, really less. So both ways it is beneficial, diagnosing also more, and false positive is also less. So it is more sensitive, more specific, both ways it is good. So why not make it the first test? Why not remove the combined screening test altogether and make the cell-free fetal DNA the primary test? primary screening test, because ultimately this is also a screening test. This is not a diagnostic test. Diagnostic tests are only CVS and amniocentesis. So can somebody tell me why it is not the primary screening test compared to the combined test? It is very good, right? Very good, my dear Mariam. Yes, because it is expensive. Good. Because it is good, yes, but anything good will come with an expense, right? So though it is improving the detection rate and decreasing the false positive rate, but it is very expensive. So it will give too much extra cost to the NHS trust. So that's why they will do the first thing first. So first they will do the combined screening test. And if that show the intermediate risk, then they will go for double confirmation by cell-free fetal DNA. So not for all, it will not be the primary screening test. So that we will see the contingent screening test, what they usually follow. We will see that a logarithm. I'm just giving you a basic idea here. Why you do this, why you do all this combined test and cell-free fetal DNA, all this you do to diagnose the chromosomal abnormality, chromosomal aneuploidies. And the finally, you will confirm by the invasive test. So prenatal invasive test or diagnostic test are this. Prenatal screening tests are 
cell free fetal dna and combined test and all other biochemical test am i clear about this okay great now if you are doing well, as i told you that dna fragments will be there in the maternal plasma so from where it came cell death happened cell death will release the dna fragments from the nucleus to the plasma that's how the cell free fetal dna will be there in the plasma of pregnant women now this will be a mixture of dna fragment some will come from mother and some will come from placenta so how much come from the placenta or fetus can anybody tell me how much percentage of dna fragments is from the fetus what is the contribution of fetus 10% ma'am fragment very good very good my dear 10% so 10% come from the fetus so please remember 90% come from the mother and 10% come from the fetus we will see the clinical application of that in the coming slides now if there will be fetal trisomies what will happen there will be extra chromosome right like trisomy 21 so there is extra chromosome in down syndrome in 21 so that will have extra chromosome so extra nuclear material right so extra nuclear material means the cell free fetal dna will be more so if supposedly we take that 20% is contributed by the baby and 80% from the mother so the genetic material 20% from baby and 80% from the mother cell free fetal dna now if there will be trisomy in place of 20% it will become 30% right and from the mother 80% so now for trisomy means the chromosome 21 you will get 110 in place of 100 because the baby is contributing 10 extra because of one extra so baby is contributing 30 mother is contributing 80 so now in place of 100 it has become 110 so that's how you diagnose that cell free fetal dna is more for chromosome 21 so that means the uh, mother is carrying a down baby this is how the this screening work am i clear about this point that extra chromosome material lead to extra contribution from the fetus clear all of you um dr shweta if it is from the fetal trisomy uh yes is the number of the fragments right from the extra fetal chromosome yes uh, okay yes okay so this is how it increases that is the principle behind testing it now as i told you it is a screening test not a diagnostic test so very important for you to understand that's a screening test if they will give you in question which is the diagnostic test never ever choose this if they ask you diagnostic test only option available is amniocentesis and cvs now this is detecting the total amount of cell free fetal dna as i told you in place of 100 it will detect 110 it is not differentiating that how many is how much is coming from fetus how much is coming from maternal that is the limitation of cell free fetal dna because it will only tell you that 21 has extra but it has come from mother or baby it will not tell you so what they say that at least cell free fetal dna should have fetal fraction of 4% if fetal fraction is at least 4% then only you can detect the changes from the baby side that's why it is not done before 10 weeks that's why it is done after 10 weeks because before that the fetal fraction is very low if fetal fraction is very low like we saw from 20% it has increased to 30% now if it is only supposedly 1% so from 1% it will become 1.5% so detecting that small difference will be very difficult that's why they have said this that's why by studies by their uh, uh, researches they have said that at least 4% contribution of cell free fetal dna from the baby should be there at least fetal fraction should be 4% then only you will be able to appreciate that in this test and this is also a recall question that how much fetal fraction should be there at least to do this test 
and this happens after 10 weeks that's why you are you do cell free fetal dna after 10 weeks am i clear about this fact because this is really really important that how much fraction of baby should be there how much what time you will be doing it these all are very important okay good and you understood the concept also behind that now now if you are doing what all condition you can screen, you can screen aneuploidy, like we know trisomy 21, 18, and 13, or you can do the sex chromosome aneuploidy if there is extra, like Klein-Fenter extra or uh, Turner syndrome, one is absent, all that things you can diagnose, or some micro deletion like D-George syndrome. Sometimes they can ask you what all things you can screen. So can anybody tell me, is it recommended for sex chromosomal aneuploidy routinely? Are we doing it means is it recommended routinely or it's not yet a routine clinical practice because for this anyways you are doing it for trisomy 21 18 and 13 it is recommended to do it is not recommended why because they are phenotypically normal and uh, there's no uh, problem to do it they make them unnecessary aware of the result Yes, that is also a problem that sometimes mother will have some problem which she doesn't know and by doing all this, she will know that she also has all this problem and she will be morally down. But why you are not checking for sex chromosomal aneuploidy in baby is because the chances of detection is low, only 90% which happened with like combined test it is 90% and also the failure rate is also high. So the, your benefit of self free fetal DNA was high detection and low failure as well as low false positive. So all your benefit has gone. That's why the screening is not strong enough evidence to do it routinely. So you are not doing it. So presently you are doing for this mainly. But you can even detect the sex of the baby in cases of RH negative women and all that things you can do. You can detect the sex of the baby also by cell free fetal DNA. So all these benefits it has. Now, how the result will come? If you see the most sensitive and the most good result will be for Down syndrome. If you see for Down syndrome, it is the uh, detection rate 99.2 and false positive rate is only 0.09%, 0.1 what they told. And for 18 and 13, if you see false positive increase a little, only little, 1, 3, but the detection rate also falls, 96 and 91. Can anybody tell me why? why this detection rate is less for 18 and 13. Definitely it's superior from the other tests like combined test and all that, but it is inferior in 18 and 13 compared to 21, why? These all I'm telling you because when I was reading, I was really confused about why there is difference between 21 and 18. I, I could never understood the concept behind it, but now I'm clear and I want you people also to know about it. And it's simple actually. The detection rate is poor in 18 and 13 because they say that in Edward and Patau syndrome, the placenta is small. So because the placenta is small, the genetic material in the mother is also small. That's why there will be false negative. That's why you cannot detect because the material is small. Here the material is more. Here the genetic material is small. That's why false negative can come in 18 and 13. That's why whenever you are getting a negative result, you should be sure that definitely there is no 21, but there could be a possibility of 18 and 13. That is the crux behind that. That's why in 18 and 13, there will be less beta HCG. In down, there will be more beta HCG. While in 18 and 13, there will be less beta HCG because the placenta is small. So less secretion of HCG also. So all in all, that is the difference between these two. All other are same. All these three things happen with higher age, uh, with uh, they will present with uh, increased maternal age, NT will be more, PAP A level will be low. In all this is common. Only difference between 21 and 18 and 13 is that 21 will have high beta HCG and this 18 and 13 will have low, low HCG level. So that is the difference. And that you can remember easily if you remember that they are having small placenta. And usually they die within one year. So they are very detrimental anyways. So they have small placenta. That's why their HCG level is also low. And that's why their detection rate is also comparatively low. 
clear all of you okay now what are this de detection rate screen positive rate false positive rate if you want to understand detection means positive you are diagnosing positive means a person has a condition and you are diagnosing so that is detection false positive means a person is not having the condition and you are diagnosing so that is false positive screen positive rate means the total positive means whatever whoever negative or real negative real positive ultimately screen positive how much so this doesn't carry much importance that's why detection rate and false positive rate is what they follow earlier the cut off for screening was 40 years now they have made it 35 years or older because 20% of the pregnant women are in this age group and 50% of the total fetus of down syndrome coming from this age group that's why nowadays they tell that all 35 and older you should screen and even for any women pregnant they say that you should offer them screening but this this is the age where the risk increase more now if you see the different method comparison this is really important sometimes they simply ask you the percentage of detection rate or false positive rate so you have to memorize this table this is important if you use only maternal age you can detect only 30% and false positive rate is fixed at 5% for all so that is fixed only for self free fetal dna it is only 0.1 but otherwise it is fixed 5% maternal age if you see detection rate 30% now in second trimester you do the biochemistry you do double test you do triple test you do quadruple test so all these things you do in second trimester so never ever think that quadruple test is done in the first trimester first trimester is only combined screening in combined screening there is maternal age nt beta hcg free beta hcg and pap a pregnancy associated plasma protein a these four things are only there all the biochemistry of this double triple and quadruple are second trimester test please don't mistake it because many student get confused with this now in double to start with there was afp and free beta hcg they check that afp and free beta hcg will be changed so you can detect 60% up till 65% remember this 65 70 75 you have added on then unconjugated estradiol and you increased it to 70% then you have added one more inhibin a and you have increased it up to 75% so this is how the biochemistry detection rate if you do combined test we already saw 90% success detection rate and 5% false positive and cell free fetal dna is 99 and 0.1 so these all the figures all the things all this information is important now if you see the screening test result in first trimester you did all these four things what happens actually in down syndrome the free beta hcg will be twice as high and pap a will be reduced to half please remember that pregnancy associated plasma protein never become high it's always low in any anomaly in any aneuploidy in preeclampsia uh, in any situation in ivf pregnancy always it is low in iugr future iugr it will be low less than 0.4 is a major factor right so pap a is always low so remember it like that pap a is always low so it will be reduced to half and free beta hcg will be high so it will be twice as high so this is what happens in down syndrome if you see in biochemical test in second trimester what will be low and what will be high because sometimes they will give you in question uh, the options of different scenario low high and they will confuse you so please remember that high beta hcg you already know from here high free beta hcg you know so what other thing is high is a this is beta so a will be in combination with it so inhibin a this is a splitted name beta hcg so it's an splitted name inhibin a because i will get confused in exam i will get confused by inhibin b they will give me inhibin b also so i will get confused so there should be a way to keep remembering it for a longer time and without confusion so always make a pair so high level of free beta hcg and inhibin a and we all know that there will be low level of alpha fetoprotein and unconjugated estradiol so two are low and two are high so one high has got a company which is in splitted name which is ab 
beta hcg and inhibin a am i clear about this because this is a big confusion and the only difference with adward and patau will be low hcg others will be same clear pap a will always be low in any scenario clear all of you these markers all the biochemical tests are in second trimester don't mistake that to the first trimester screening which is combined test which has only two marker hcg and pregnancy associated plasma protein a am i clear my dear yes doctor okay good now what are the other important points to remember screening in twin this is always the exam favorite how you will screen a twin pregnancy can you do combined test can you not do it all that things so combined test you can do in twin but can anybody tell me in triplet can you do it we finished already twin pregnancy right no triplets we can't do it so what you will do in triplet maternal age and nuclear transmission age and age very good very good my dear so in triplet never ever choose biochemical markers because the level definitely with three babies all the level will be half hazard so practically you don't want to choose biochemical marker for a twin pregnancy but they say that in twins you can do but in triplet you cannot do because in triplet it will be really unreliable in twin you can detect the same but only false positive will be higher so we saw that in singleton it will be 2.5 then in dichorionic 5% false positive and in monochorionic 10% false positive so that is there but still you can offer them combined test so you will offer them combined test detection rate will be similar but you will inform the women that false positive rate will be high because you are a twin pregnancy according to her chorionicity so this is an important point i already discussed with you about 18 and 13 that here only beta hcg will be decrease otherwise age will be high nt will be high pap a will always be low what you will do if there is high nt what other ultrasound marker you can see in down syndrome additional ultrasound marker sometimes they will give you in question that additional ultrasound marker all these things they will give you and they will tell you that you will rely on what so national screening program has not yet implemented this additional ultrasound marker so you cannot choose this in exam like absence of nasal bone increased resistance this is first trimester scan we are talking about nt scan so in nt scan absence of nasal bone because there could be absence of nasal bone in the beginning and later in second trimester you will be able to see it increased resistance to the flow to ductus venosus and tricuspid regurgitation just keep a rough idea about this because there is a specific talk about this there is another talk of 2015 about down syndrome screening where they have a uh, detailed description they have given about this all things so this is still not recommended so you will not choose it in exam but you have to understand that these are the additional usg marker in the nt scan now again as i told you but they increase screen positive to 97% yes my dear yes mean very good all these are there anything extra you do definitely you are doing it to detect more but you have to follow what they are saying they are saying that you don't have to use it in clinical practice yet so you don't have to use because they are making recommendations so whatever recommendation they will give you you have to follow that now cell free fetal dna testing in twin as i told you monochorionic and dichorionic are two different entity so cell free fetal dna is also behaving differently in these two pregnancy what happens in monochorionic we say that it is identical twin right so both fetuses will release the genetic material and they will release the same amount of genetic material because they are identical twins and the placenta is connected so you can rely you can rely on the cell free fetal dna here and you will give the pregnancy specific risk not the fetus specific risk because they are same same they are contributing the same amount of genetic material so you will give a pregnancy specific risk in monochorionic pregnancy 
and you can offer safely in such scenario okay so you can tell a monochorionic pregnancy that cell free fetal dna is a good thing for you though your false positive rate with combined screening was 10% but cell free fetal dna is reliable in your case so if uh, in a monochorionic uh, twin pregnancy the cell uh, the combined test come positive then you can surely double check with the cell free fetal dna because it is more reliable in monochorionic compared to combined test so it can be offered and it will give a pregnancy specific risk but in dichorionic twin pregnancy the data on accuracy are inadequate so you cannot offer this here in dichorionic both fetuses are separate so every fetus will be uh, contributing a discordant amount of dna one fetus if that one baby is down and the other is not one will be uh, contributing too much other will be not contributing and then it will all confusion starts so that's why they are telling that this test accuracy data is inadequate for dichorionic so you will not offer them but for monochorionic you can offer in monochorionic you will get pregnancy specific risk in dichorionic they have to rate each fetus separately that's why it will become in appropriate it will become inaccurate am i clear about this because sometimes they ask you they give you in question pregnancy specific risk fetus specific risk and you don't understand what all these terms are because here identical twin placenta is attached so you are giving pregnancy specific risk and it is reliable here both fetuses are separate entity that's why it is not reliable here and you have to give fetus specific risk now contingent screening method this is what they follow as i told you they will not do the cell free fetal dna as a primary screening test so they are doing contingent screening method where first they will give them combined screening at 11 to 13 weeks and by age nt and beta hcg and pap a level and then they will segregate them in three category high risk intermediate risk and low risk if low risk nothing else to be done if high risk straight away you will take them for invasive testing right if intermediate risk you have to do the cell free fetal dna if that is positive you have to do the invasive test now what is high risk and what is intermediate risk if you see high risk means the risk of at least 1 in 100 that is high risk intermediate risk is risk between 1 in 101 and 1 and in 2500 so 1 in 100 is really really high so you have immediately referred for invasive and if it is between 100 and 2500 you want to double check and if this is also positive because this is more detection rate and less false positive rate then you want to do the invasive test so this is the algorithm they are following this is also known as contingent screening method but sometimes what happen they will tell you the different uh, gestation like if they will present in this gestational age you will offer them combined screening if they will, if they will present in second trimester you will directly offer them only quadruple markers because that is the best choice you have right so always check whenever they give all this things always check the gestational age because accordingly you have to offer the screening test am i clear about this clear all of you yes okay then what is fail cell free dna test as i told you sometime it will be failed in cases of edward and patel so whenever you get low fraction because the placenta is small in this scenario low fetal fraction high failure rate is common in them so if you get a failed one almost you are sure that you are not dealing with downs how much it happens 1 to 5% of the pregnancies it happens why it happens because of the low fraction what you will do after that you will do the repeat sampling and in repeat sampling you will be able to obtain in around 60% of the cases so it's good no problem you can repeat sometime there will be low fraction because of obese mother and small masses small masses we already saw in maternal obesity also so in maternal obesity in cases of ivf pregnancy in cases of hiv all these things alter the biochemical parameters also so maternal obesity also affect the cell free fetal dna also so please remember this also because sometimes they might ask you that in obese women how much reliable it is so definitely in obese women there will be low fetal fraction 
same as small placental masses. So what you will do? If failed cell-free fetal DNA test, which is seen in one to five percent, you will repeat the test. You will repeat the test. Sixty percent, the result will come. If not come, or if the women refuse the repeat test, in that case, you will do the detailed USG. This is important. They will give you a clinical scenario that a uh, failed test has happened and uh, women refuse the repeat test. What to do now? So what you will do? You will leave her alone? You cannot. Because if failed test, you are already in doubt of Edward and Patel. So you cannot leave her. So that's why you will do the detailed ultrasound to check for if any soft marker you are getting, which will give you any clue. So this is important. Am I clear about this? This is really, really important. They can give you as a next step in anything, like fail free fetal DNA, How, what you will do next. So you will repeat the test. Repeat test failed, what you will do next? So you will do the ultrasound. And how much is the failure rate also you should remember, up to 5%. Clear all of you? Can I ask you a few questions then? Okay, what is the uh, amount of fetal fraction? Minimum fetal fraction should be there to do the cell-free fetal DNA test. 4%. Very good. So what from what week you can do it? 10 week. Very good. Uh, what is the detection rate and false positive rate? 99% detection rate, false positive rate is 0.1%. Very good. And uh, is it a primary screening test? No, no, because it does not cause suffering. Okay, very good. And uh, what is the failure rate? One to five percent. Very good. And what will be the levels of uh, beta hcg what will be the difference of beta hcg between down and edward and patau it is because of low plasma in edward and patau other important question about this is in down syndrome what is the chances of down syndrome the risk of down syndrome age wise and they ask about the recurrence of down syndrome so all the syndrome we will be covering in fetal genetic it will be a separate class where we will be covering all the syndromes and all the autosomal dominant recessive and all that thing so it will be all together a different session so i have not taken that today so that we will see in the fetal genetics class so i hope this down syndrome screen is clear to you all and this is really important and no exam goes without any question from this uh, screening method thank you all for participating today in this down syndrome screening part because this is really important from exam point of view now this is my uh, this is MMRCOG Facebook uh, group link and this is Telegram group link, as well as the YouTube uh, link is available in the YouTube uh, description. So if you want, you can join the group. In Facebook, we do have the daily uh, schedule as well as the if you have any doubt, you can put there, as well as whatever new courses and new updates are uh, happening that will be updated there. In Telegram, you will get daily uh, module-wise questions. So module-wise discussion we do, as well as follow schedule module-wise. So that gives a better impact rather than just simply doing the books. So module-wise question really help you in understanding that what lines of guideline are important and how it is asked. So it is really important uh, in making your study successful. So you can join the these groups to uh, take help in your uh, study. This is the new upcoming course. This is the uh, this is the course where the five month course, the registration has already been started. And uh, as you can see here, uh, it is uh, two course in price of one. So it's the most affordable and most worthy of all. If you see the free crash course is there at the end, which is really very important as last revision matters the most. If you see the students uh, usually will because it's so vast course that you start studying and then you keep studying and a point come where you start losing hope because you are not able to revise it well. 
that's why the crash course play a, a vital role in your uh, final uh, brush up of your study because whatever you have read if you don't remember that then it's difficult for you to reproduce that in exam so that's why i have come up with this two course together and it is only as the price of one course as well as there is huge discounts running if you want you can opt for um, uh, group discounts if you have two friends or three friends you can join for group discounts for two it is 300 dollar only and for three or more it is only 250 dollar for two courses you can pay the fee in installment also so that um, it makes more feasible for you and if you have any concern and if you need any further discount or if you have anything you can let me know and accordingly we can discuss this is my contact number so if you have any query you can put on this number this is my whatsapp number or you can mail at this uh, mail id so this is the course starting now already people have started registering and only few seat left so if you are interested in boosting your study to succeed in first attempt uh, definitely you can uh, think about enrolling in the course as soon as possible if you like my videos in youtube you can subscribe to it you can like and share with your friends if you subscribe you can press the bell icon then you will be notified by the new video posted so you will be keep updated and as well as you can uh, utilize these videos in your preparation and making the your preparation more uh, strong as well as it will help you in making your understanding easy as well as clarify the gtg points as well as talks and uh, nice guidelines so i'll keep posting the videos and stay updated stay tuned with me and please subscribe the channel if you like it thank you very much